Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Xenarthrans are a distinctive group of mammals that originated on the island continent of South America during the early Cenozoic. With a name meaning strange jointed ones, these animals represent one of the four major lineages of placental mammals, with the others consisting of the Aphrotheres, Laurasiotherians, and Euarchontoglias. Living Xenarthrans include the armadillos, sloths, and anteaters with many notable extinct groups appearing in the fossil record. These included the large, heavily armoured glyptodonts, the armadillo-like pampatheres, and the sometimes enormous browsing ground sloths. Although most of Xenarthron evolution took place in relative isolation on South America, the formation of the Isthmus of Panama allowed these animals to spread into Central and North America. Indeed, while many endemic South American groups became extinct at the time of the Great American Interchange, the Xenarthrans successfully pushed northwards, with fossil evidence suggesting that ground sloths once dwelt as far north as Alaska during the Pleistocene. In modern times, the nine-banded armadillo is native to a large part of the southern and eastern US, as well as most regions of Mexico and Central America. The small three-toed sloth also inhabits forested regions of Central America, in addition to the Amazon rainforest, and anteaters dwell as far north as southern Mexico. So what characters unite these varied animals? The best place to start would be with their titular strange joints. This name was chosen due to the group's possession of extra articulations on the vertebral joints of the spine, a condition known as xenarthry. Some groups would lose this feature, in particular the modern tree sloths, but their ancestors did still possess this trait. The extra articulations help to strengthen the spine, which is a beneficial adaptation for digging animals. The teeth of Xenarthrans are also different from those of other mammals, with most species either lacking teeth altogether or possessing highly modified and reduced dentition. Sloths and anteaters lack milk teeth as infants, retaining either a single set of permanent teeth or lacking them entirely in the case of the latter. This condition is present in most armadillos as well, except the genus Dazipus, and all Xenarthrans that do possess teeth lack enamel. Their reproductive tracts are also rather unusual, with males having internal genitalia resting near the kidneys, while females lack a clear distinction between the uterus and vagina. All living members of the group also lack colour vision and have quite poor eyesight, suggesting that ancestral Xenarthrans were likely adapted for digging beneath the ground in search of insects. In addition, these animals have very low metabolic rates for mammals. It has been suggested that North American ground sloths would have utilised caves and burrows to help regulate their body temperature in colder climatic conditions. These anatomical traits were beneficial in enabling Xenarthrans to thrive in relatively dry, marginal environments such as open scrubland, requiring less food than similarly sized Laurasiotherians. These shared traits have aided paleontologists in reconstructing the early evolutionary history of Xenarthrans, as the early Cenozoic fossil record of these animals is rather scarce. The oldest known Xenarthran is the genus Rheostegotherium, represented by fragmentary remains consisting of osteoderms and limb bones dating to the late Paleocene or early Eocene of Itaborai, Brazil. This genus was a member of the modern armadillo lineage Singulata, and was already recognisably very similar to its modern relatives. This suggests that much of the Paleocene evolutionary development of early Xenarthrans has yet to be uncovered, and we currently lack any ancestral forms. No Xenarthran specimens have yet been identified that are unequivocally Paleocene in age, and Eocene remains primarily consist of disarticulated armadillo osteoderms. With a handful of exceptions, Xenarthran skulls are virtually unknown from before the early Oligocene, and reasonably complete skeletons are unknown from prior to the late early Miocene. The oldest sloths first appeared during the late Eocene with the genus Pseudoglyptodon, while their sister group, the Vermilinguan anteaters, first show up in the early Miocene. Both groups are almost certainly older than this, but their fossils have yet to be described. The common ancestor of all Xenarthrans was likely already adapted for eating ants and termites, with both fossorial and some arboreal traits. It has been suggested that Xenarthran rarity in early Cenozoic deposits may be due to low population densities associated with this diet, a lack of durable enamel-covered teeth, and the general scarcity of fossil localities from tropical latitudes of South America. 
Although we lack their fossils, we may be able to speculate about their appearance based on other animals with similar adaptations. Indeed, reinforced spines are found in other insectivorous mammals adapted for digging, including the hero shrews of Central Africa. These little animals utilise their toughened vertebrae in order to push their way under rocks and into crevices in search of burrowing worms and insects. Ancestral Xenarthrons may have lived a somewhat similar lifestyle, but specialising on eating ants and termites. A fossil Eutriconodont, Spinalestes, from the early Cretaceous of Spain, also possessed Xenarthrus vertebrae and was adept at digging, suggesting a possible parallel with basal Xenarthrons. This patchy fossil record has led to problems with placing these animals within the placental family tree. They have been suggested to be part of a clade called Atlantogenata, which would also include the Aphrothias, due to a number of shared traits, including their relatively slow metabolisms, internalised genitals in males, and similarities in the milk composition of females. If this turns out to be correct, then ancestral Atlantogenatans may have crossed the much narrower Atlantic Ocean that was present during the early Paleocene. Other theories have been proposed, including that the hypothesis that Xenarthrids are the most basal placental mammals of all, or that they should be positioned as the sister group to Boreoeutheria instead. Regardless of placement, living members of the clade can be divided into broad lineages, Tingulata and Pilosa. The former includes the armadillos and relatives, such as the extinct glyptodonts and pampatheres, while Pilosa contains the sloths and anteaters. I will cover each of the individual families in these groups in future videos, but I hope that this has given you an introduction to the unique combination of features that define these unusual animals, and to some of the controversies surrounding their fossil history. Thanks for watching everyone! The next episode will deal with the Noasaurids, a family of strange theropods closely related to the abelisaurs. See you again soon. Cheerio.